Hi everyone, this is Christy Sadowski from the Southington Library, and today I'm gonna to be talking you through making the Stitcher Pride Make and Take Kit. As you can see right here, here is my finished example of the project. It is a heart that then has the rainbow coming out around it. All right, let's unpack the kit that you should have picked up from the library. If you don't have a kit, I am going to be attaching the instructions um, in some way to the video, so you'll be able to look at it there. And these are some simple items that you should be able to find around your house. So first we have the all important directions, uh, followed by, of course, fabric, an embroidery hoop, a heart-shaped stencil, and a card with six different colors of string and an embroidery needle. We did tape the point down, but they are sharp, so be careful. You're also going to need from your house scissors and a pencil. Let's take a quick look at the instructions before we get started. You can run down the side, make sure you've got your supplies, and we've got a um, little step-by-step -step guide here that I'm gonna go over um, as we do with the project. Other things in this packet are your patterns. So we have a couple different pride flags here that you can pick from. We have the traditional pride flag, the Philadelphia people of color inclusive flag, transgender flag, and the bisexual flag. Uh, these are of course by no means the only ones. And in fact, to further illustrate that point, I put a little bit of information here that we got from the complete guide to queer pride flags by Ariel Sobel on pride.com. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different ones. So feel free to modify any of these patterns to, um, to work for what it is that you would like to make. What I'm gonna be doing today and the one that we provided the supplies for is the traditional pride flag. It is based off of the one um, created by... Let's take a quick look at the instructions before we get started. You can run down the side, make sure you've got your supplies. And we've got a um, little step-by-step -step guide here that I'm gonna go over um, as we do with the project. Other things in this packet are your patterns. So we have a couple different pride flags here that you can pick from. We have the traditional pride flag, the Philadelphia people of color inclusive flag, transgender flag, and the bisexual flag. Uh, these are of course by no means the only ones. And in fact, to further illustrate that point, I put a little bit of information here that we got from the complete guide to queer pride flags by Ariel Sobel on pride.com. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different ones. So feel free to modify any of these patterns to, um, to work for what it is that you would like to make. What I'm gonna be doing today and the one that we provided the supplies for is the traditional pride flag. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lay out my fabric and get my heart stencil. Uh, I'm gonna put it right in the center. That's what I'm gonna do. But if you look at the size of the fabric compared to our stencil over here, you can see that there might be room to do two on this fabric. Um, one up here and one down here. And our five inch hoop is just about exactly the size of that five inch circle of our pattern. So I'm now going to take my pencil, remember you've got to find one of those at home, and I'm going to outline the heart onto the fabric. You can use something different. Uh, if at home you have any kind of washable um, marker or pen or other um, you know, writing utensil that would disappear, you could go ahead and use that. I would just double check on a corner of the fabric that it can wash out if it's something that is pretty dark um, because you're not gonna wanna see that at the end. And you do have to kind of go a couple of times. You can see I've sort of almost got the outline, but I forgot to do the point. So I'm just gonna line it right back up again. And there we go. Should take care of the point there. And 
think it's pretty good, but I just want to darken right here a little bit for my own uh, abilities. Okay, so you can see my heart outline. It's pretty faint and that's okay because we don't want it to show up on our finished project, which I'm gonna pull out here for just one second. If you look really closely, you can still see my pencil line. That's because I haven't washed this one or really done anything to try and get rid of it because I want to be able to show that to you. Once you've got your heart traced, you're gonna take it and put it over, over your stencil here. And this is actually really see-through fabric. So you can see that, you know, my heart isn't exactly identical to the one there. You can retrace this one if you prefer, but uh, I kind of like the little bit pointier heart, um, but I am going to clean it up just a little. And then what I'm going to do is trace these lines. They are a rough guide for what, where we're gonna split the colors so that you have roughly even sections of color, um, which I did manage to do on this one here. Um, they're roughly even. However, and this is an error in here, but it, it looks okay, so I'm gonna go with it. On um, purple, I wound up with extra row or lines. All of these have 10 lines of each color, but on purple, I finished 10 at over here and I still had that space. So I needed to try and fill that in a little. So it looks okay and you can't really tell because the sections are roughly the same, but that is something that, you know, if you're a perfectionist, you may wanna try to avoid. So I'm gonna go back to drawing my lines. All right, my lines are drawn. I slid a piece of white paper under here just so you could see where they were. Again, you know, they're roughly the same but you don't have to stick with any of this if it works out not being quite the way you want it when you're going. That's the beauty of the pencil that's gonna wash away. So we're gonna take our ring, um, split in half, and we're gonna take the bottom half, which is the solid one. This one is the top that has this, and put it under our fabric. And we're gonna try to get that heart roughly centered into the hoop. And I think that's, pretty good for me. Uh, all right, and you put the top on. Again, pull your fabric kind of tight because you don't want it to, you know, be too loose and buckle. And then tighten the hoop. For our next step, we're going to start working here with our string and get that ready. I've already taken the red string off and I found the end here. Uh, it looks like there's two separate ends, but really it's one string uh, right here. And the reason it looks like two is because I started pulling them apart. Each of these is actually made up of three or six different tinier strings. So we're gonna take it so that we've got three and three and we're gonna split this in half. It gives us double the thread and also makes our stitches look a little bit finer and a little bit smaller, which in the end makes it look a little fancier. So just go through the whole string like this. Sometimes it gets tangled, so I like to keep it really tight while I do it so that I don't wind up with a giant knot. Uh, once you've got that th those three pieces of string uh, separated from the longer six string, you can go ahead and thread your needle. What I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna deviate from our pattern for just one moment and I'm gonna go over the three different stitches that I'm going that I've suggested for this pattern. Obviously there are dozens, if not hundreds of different stitches you could do, and you can find most of or all of them online. I am going to start um, with a basic stitch. Uh, with this stitch, like with all of them, I have one end of the string tied in a knot, and I have the string looped through the needle and hanging a little bit over. All right, and I've moved to a corner of my fabric so I can show this to you. So this is the back stitch. Uh, you're gonna use it to make a line. So you go in and down. Uh, it's nice to try for a straight line, but one of the things that's gonna make this look good is the fact that it's gonna be slightly imperfect. Uh, you can see it gets stuck around the hoop sometimes, but you just un undo it and hold it tight. So there's our first stitch. It's a basic sewing stitch. The next one, I'm gonna come up a little bit later, just like you know you would. 
And instead of moving forward, what I'm going to do, and that's right here, is I'm gonna go down into this hole. So here on the pattern, you see that I do I did a light, light tiny uh, break in between the stitches. We don't actually want that break, but I wanted you to be able to see where the stitches went. So into that hole where I just went down before, I'm going to go down again with my second stitch. And there we go. So it looks like they're running together, but there is that little hole there. And then I'm gonna go up again, a little bit farther up, trying to keep my straight line and down. Now, if you're not following this, which is totally fine, there are hundreds, again, of videos online and other tutorials for different stitches. So this one is called the back stitch, and uh, you are welcome to go ahead and give uh, that one a try or a look online. So I'm gonna do just a couple more here. So going back through the same hole that I went down before, or, or I came up from before. Up farther away from the stitches and down into the previous one. All right, and when I've decided that I have enough of that stitch, I'm gonna flip it over, you see? And I'm gonna tie it off by sliding my needle under some of the existing stitches. And, pulling it tight and with a little bit left, running my needle through that loop so that I can make a knot. It's tied off. Uh, you could do that a couple times just to give it a little bit more strength or you can cut it off like that. I'm gonna try and keep as little uh, edges on my string as possible because you can see a little bit when you when you pull through. Of course, when you put it up against your wall or against a solid piece of paper, it's a little bit harder to see those stitches. Up next is the stem stitch. Again, I've got spaces between the stitches. You're not really gonna see those when you put the stitch into practice. It's gonna be a flat line like that with a little bit of overlap. So I'm gonna get going. I've got my string just the way before, pulled through on one end, tied in a knot on the other and I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna enter my fabric. And I'm gonna come back down over here. Now for the next stitch, I'm gonna actually come up halfway between my first two, but right underneath it, as tight as I can get. Pull it through, and then I'm gonna go down a little bit farther. You can alter the size of your stitches however you want. You can make them smaller or longer for a different look. So now that I've gone down again, I'm gonna come up, but this time I'm gonna come up through this hole where this string goes down. Bow. All right, so hopefully you can see that there. The one thing I didn't do is, because I was showing it to you, you should actually be on the other side of the string. So when you go up, you should always be on the top, and when you go down, you should be on the bottom. So I'm gonna go down over here, and then I'm gonna come up again through the hole with the other stitch. and then go down farther on. So with this one, it makes it look a little bit thicker. Um, this is often used on flower stems, uh, hence the stem stitch name. It's getting kind of close so you can see. So it looks like one solid line. It bl uh, blends the stitches together. Unlike with this one, especially on this fabric, you can see some of the holes. So this one makes a little bit more of a solid line. So I'm gonna tie it off just like I did the other stitch. Uh, go down the last time, turn it over, and go through the previous stitch right underneath. Get a tiny loop. Go through that to make my knot. 
and I'm holding it there just so I can get it nice and tight because I don't want it to, uh, if you give too much leeway, then the stitches can start sagging a little bit, being a little bit too loose. So there you have it, that is the stem stitch. So we're looking now at the back stitch in blue and the stem stitch in green. So we're onto the chain stitch. It looks a little bit different in practice than it does on this diagram. I expanded everything, made it wider so that you could really see what's happening with the stitches. And I'm gonna give it a try here. Same as always, fold it over on one end, tied in a knot on the other. This stitch definitely is the thickest of them. So if you want a really thick line, it is in fact what I did here. Um, and that's how it looks almost like it's a double line on each of the lines. So you go up and rather than come straight down, you're going to make a loop and go down in the same hole that you came up in. And don't pull it tight though, right away. Uh, you don't wanna do that. You wanna give it a little bit of leeway. Okay, see I've got my loop. And now you're gonna come up in the middle. Here, I've got a loop going on here and I'm going to come up in the middle of that loop with string on either side. And this is when you're gonna pull tight. A lot of fabric or string. So see when you pull tight, you've got your loop with the string going around it. So that's your first chain. The second one, you're gonna hold the uh, string off to the side again and go back down into the hole you just came up from until you've got that loop. Kind of line the loop up with the direction you're going and come up again through it and then pull tight. And I'm gonna do two more just so you can see it. Go back down through, don't pull tight. Line up your loop, go through. All right. And then this will be the last stitch. I'm gonna go back through that same hole and I'm gonna pull my loop. Now the tricky one here is I wanna tie it off. So before you tie it off, there's one last step. When you get to your last loop, go up, pull it tight, and ooh, bouncing camera. And rather than making another loop, go down in the same hole over the string. Pull a little bit tight. So you've got your final loop right here, and you've got this one that you're doing, which is really just one very tight stitch over that last chain so that it holds it in place. Sometimes you're gonna get a little bit of extra string there. So that is the chain stitch, which again, for another one, is the example here. So you can see it makes everything just a little bit thick. All right, so now that we know our stitches, it's time to pick one and to get started on our pattern. I'm gonna go with the stem stitch. Um, that's what I'd like to do. You could also, if you're feeling really uh, experimental, you could try doing the different stitches in a rotation and see how that looks with every one of them having just a little bit more and different texture. All right, so my first segment, I'm back here with my heart roughly centered into my hoop and I've got my red string. So I'm going to start with the red segment here. Uh, obviously you could start it at any point on your, uh, any one of these segments. You could make each color, but this is the order for the pride flag. All right. I'm actually gonna start right on the line I drew, which it's very faint, but it's right here. Uh, another quick little tip before we get started is the center of our hearts has this circle on it. So if you kind of mark where that circle is, Again, you're gonna to wanna to be able to wash that off. You can see where the string should go. So every string should be coming out from that center point. So you can see some of my lines might not be exact, but they're just to be rough guidelines for the segments. So I'm gonna go into my heart, right on the edge of where my, my, uh, my line is. So it'll be right on that edge. All right, so I've gone in right on the edge of that heart. I'm gonna make my first stitch. This is gonna be a really, really short row. This is the part where it tends to get stuck on the hoop the most because you're so close 
to that metal thing. All right, and I'm gonna come up in the middle again because this is the stem stitch. Go down. I think I can get at least three stitches in this row. Come back up through that same hole from my previous down. And then right here, when I want to know where to end it and I want it to be uniform around the edge of the circle, I'm going to use this inner um, ring as a guide and I'm going to put my needle right up against it, keeping my circle long or my straight line from the center and go down that way. So now that you've done that, we've got our first line coming in from the center. Roughly. It's okay if it's a little off. So on the back, you can go ahead and you can tie it off or you could run your thread down the line that you just sewed and tuck it into your previous stitch. One of the stitches down low. And the reason for doing this is now my thread is back to the ring around the heart, but I don't have it just all over the place making extra lines. So turn it back over and I'm gonna start on my next line. I'm going to try to be a little more cognizant of my straight line this time from the circle. So I'll run the string across it this way so that I know on this one I need to go like that. All right. So you basically do this. Uh, I recommend about 10 rows of color for each segment. You can do more in space uh, and have it be a lot more solid. And just to show you what that's going to look like, if you have more, it's going to be like the purple section here where they're tighter together. And if you have less, a good example would be over here in the orange where they're spaced kind of far apart. Uh, so whatever you do, I uh, would try and get as roughly the same number of lines per segment as you go. And you're just going to keep stitching along until you finish. When you end a segment, tie it off just like we did on the other side and start the next one. If you run out of your string that's on your needle, you have the other half of what you separated. So you should be good to go for most of this project. If you do run out of string, or if you wanted to do one of the other examples that had different colors, uh, again, the Philadelphia People of Color Inclusive flag, or perhaps the transgender or bisexual flag, or any of the others, on this guideline or something you find online that is meaningful to you. Uh, you can get that string at any local craft store. Now that you're done, um, and don't feel that you have to do it all in one sitting. It's, it's a nice relaxing activity watching the TV or for a little bit of meditation. So now that you're done, what do you do with it? There's a couple of different things you can do with any bit of fabric. You could sew it into something or you could actually hang it up just the way it is. This wooden uh, hoop can also serve as a frame. And that's what I'm going to show right now is I'm going to come onto the back and I'm going to sew these corners down. For a really nice version, you could actually, once you do this, put a little bit of stuffing in and then another piece of fabric to, to make it look smooth on the back. But I'm going to do just a quick one with the supplies that we have here. Do kind of a running stitch in and out, like the back stitch, but without going backwards around the edge to kind of pull it tight, especially as I start getting some to the corners where it needs to be doubled up. All right, so you can see just from doing that, it starts to pull them all in a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna take the string and go to the corners and pull them tight. I'm running a little low on thread here, um, but what I would do now is try and tie this in a knot and, and seal it up. But it gives you a good look at what that would look like. So now you've got something like that, that you could hang on your wall. And one of the ways you could do that is if you grabbed a little bit of ribbon, like the kind that came on your bag, and just loop it through this opening here. Got one piece, not the other. Put that through. Pull it close to tight and do that. And there you have it. That's how you stitch your pride in this particular make and take craft from the Southington Library. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you'll join us for another craft soon. Thanks and have a great day.